Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to talk about a new game by the name of Quadropolis. This is a city building game, somewhat abstract, in which two to four players will be drafting tiles from a common board in order to uh, build a city that will score them the most points at the end of the game. The game is published by Days of Wonder. It looks terrific. It's designed by Francois Gadon, and it plays, like I said, from two to four players, ages eight and up. In about 30 to 60 minutes, there's um, an expert version of the game that takes longer, uh, but if you're playing the basic game, it will take about 30 minutes. I will take a moment to show you some of the rules of the game, and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so here's what the uh, setup of a two-player game of uh, Quadropolis might look like at the start of one of the rounds. Um, each player will be given one of these uh, player sheets where they're going to build their cities by collecting tiles from this sheet here, um, which they're going to claim the uh, tiles using these architect tiles. Each player in the basic game will get four of these, numbered one, two, three, and four, in their color. And on their turn, what they're going to do is simply place the uh, token in one of the spaces around the board. So for example, any of these spaces here, they can place it. And when they do that, they are going to be able to take the tile that corresponds to the number counting forward. And you do count blank spaces. So for example, if I place my one architect here, I would take this building here, because it's the first one in the line, and then I would get to add it to my display on my building. And you'll notice the uh, grid of the uh, building here is also labeled as a grid with rows and columns label, labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4 and 1, 2, 3, and 4. So because I used my one architect to take that building I'm required to place it in row number 1 or column number 1. So when I do that, let's say I place it here in column number 1, I get to take whatever is shown in the top left corner of that tile. So this factory it produces 3 energy in the bottom right of the tile, there's going to be a cost, which the uh, building will need to be satisfied um, with at the end of the uh, game in order to score. So this building, in order to score at the end of the game, will require one worker. If you don't have that uh, worker to put on this building at the end of the game, you will just take that tile off of your city before you score. But, however, for there are only these uh, two types of resources. There are the uh, workers and there are the energy. If you have excess energy or excess workers that you can't allocate at the end of the game, you will lose points. So let's say I put this here, I would get to take three workers, and you could put this on the tile, or you could just put them off to the side and allocate them later. The game lets you freely move those resources, but you should take them as a reminder that they will be, need to be spent before the end of the game. So that would conclude the first player's turn. You would then take this building inspector tile, or pawn, and you would put it on the space of the tile where the, the uh, player just took, of the tile that the player just took. What that does is, when it's the next player's turn, so the green player here, they could place any of their four architect tiles, but they cannot place the, a tile so that it would point to this building inspector. So they cannot place it here pointing up, they cannot place it here pointing down, or over here to the side. So, as tiles get taken and as this architect moves around, your options become more and more limited over the course of the round, so you're going to want to draft tiles that are advantageous to you early on. So, let's say this player just takes this, plays this too, takes this park tile, then it would be the red player, this inspector would move here, then it would be the red player's turn again. They might, for example, place uh, this three tile here, take this harbor, add it to their board, the pawn would move here, and so on. And this goes until all four players have taken four tiles, or up to four players have taken four tiles, and then that would be the end of the round. Um, one exception to the uh, placement rules is are these uh, tower buildings. These tower buildings in the basic game are the only buildings that can only be built um, on a space, but could be built built in a stack on a space. So if I took this um, this building with a uh, first, I took it with a four, let's say and I put it on my four space. If I took another one later with a two, even though this one is in row four, column four, because it would be the second story of that building, I could place it on there because I used a two. So two would correspond to a second story, and those could be up to four stories tall, and they'll score accordingly. You will only need to power a stack of tiles once for the uh, top tile. 
So the game will go like that, and um, uh, you know you will eventually accumulate a number of tiles on your board. After four rounds, you're going to just score those tiles. So the way the scoring works in the basic game, every player is given one of these sheets that shows the uh, various types of tiles. So these residential tiles, they generally give you workers that need power to uh, fulfill. There's one that has a first player marker on it. If you take that tile, you'll get to be first player in the next round. Otherwise, that doesn't change. And at the end of the game, the, st the stacks will score based on how many tiles are in the stack. So one, two, three, or four will score one, three, six, or 10 points. The parks score for being adjacent to any of your towers. So you count how many are orthogonally adjacent to your park and you score points accordingly. Uh, these are shops and they will score if you are able to place people into them. So your excess people could be dumped into these shops and they'll score points. Each shop could hold up to four people. The um, next tile here are, are, are the um, factories and they score points for every harbor which are down here or shop that they're adjacent to. These, hall, these are uh, city buildings and they will score based on how many quadrants you have um, the city buildings present in, up to four quadrants you could score. Even if you get multiple ones of those, those will just score once per quadrant. And the harbors, they score for how many you have within a line. You could only use each harbor within one line, so you could not count this as a line of four and a line of two. This would just be a line of four and a line of one. At the end of the game, you will add up all of those points, plus subtract any points for any unallocated resources that you might have, and then whoever has the most points will win. So Quadropolis also comes with an advanced variant in the box. You would flip over your player side to use this. In this advanced variant, you'll play over five rounds instead of four, so it does take a bit longer. And your architect tiles, instead of being assigned to your specific color as they are in the base game, will get flipped over. And there will be a pool of ones equal to the number of players, twos, threes, fours, and fives, each equal to the uh, number of players. So you'll be drafting tiles from the common pool instead of having to use a one, two, three, and a four each round. The game also in the advanced uh, variant adds monuments, which score differently, and the rest of the scoring is slightly altered, um, sometimes radically altered. There are also an, uh, another office building type which score for being adjacent to one another. Um, I won't go into all of those scoring rules for the expert variation, but be aware that that does significantly change the game and it is included in the box. So that is how you play Quadropolis. Okay, so that is Quadropolis, and this is a really terrific game. I'm really surprised how much I enjoy this. Um, there's a lot of drafting games lately, but this has a unique mechanism that enables you to um, really plan your moves ahead in a way that some drafting games, you know, such as card drafting games, don't necessarily. Um, really, you know, making sure that you don't get stuck with a tile that you don't want at the end of a round is crucial. Um, and it requires some planning in how you're going to use those architect tiles, even in the basic game. Um, the uh, two different games in the box is a huge plus. Uh, the games do play significantly differently. The basic game, you could play that you know, as casually as you want. You could barely pay attention to what other players are doing. But if you really want to, um, you could you know, take tiles that you know other players want. You could try to block by placing your, you know, that uh, building inspector on the board in places that will keep other players from claiming tiles. Uh, but if you want to just play it as a completely light game where you're only worried about what's going on in your own city, that's entirely possible too. And I really appreciate that flexibility in this uh, game design. Um, and then to have another game essentially built into it as well, the uh, five. The five-round uh, expert variant is is terrific. I've I have to say I've only played the expert variant once, variant once, and the uh, basic variant twice. But already I, I'm starting to see ways I can improve my strategies. Um, with the number of building tiles that are in the game, I don't know long term how how much variation there is. I don't know if you know one tile is going to be better than another long term. But since it is a drafting game, that will probably tend to be self-balancing. Players will go for the best tiles first, and you'll have to be competing with them for them if that turns out to be the case. But, you know, initial impressions on this one are extremely strong. I really think this is one of the best family games of the year, and it's one that I think more hardcore gamers could enjoy as well. So those are my thoughts on Quadropolis, and thank you for watching.